السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق أجمعين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين All praise is due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم We ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to bless him and all his companions and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless every single one of us. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us another opportunity to meet in order to go through some of the reminders that he has placed within the book that he has sent to us. So we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this opportunity and we ask him to accept it from us and we ask him to make us from those who take heed whenever they are reminded. This evening, I must commence by sharing some verses that we recited in the recitation that brought tears to the eyes where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-A'raf makes mention of a discussion of the people of paradise with the people of hell and Allah is using the past tense which means this is as good as done Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the people of heaven called out to the people of hell. Listen to what he says. The people of heaven called out to the people of hell whilst they were burning in the fire of hell the people of heaven asked them we have found what allah has promised us to be true we are sitting in so much goodness we have whatever we wish what about you people have you found what allah promised you to be true what was the response they said yes we did we found it to be true فَأَذَّنَ مُؤَذِّنٌ بَيْنَهُمْ أَلَّعْنَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الظَّالِمِينَ So a caller from amongst them called out The curse of Allah be upon the oppressors May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us from the oppressors And sometime later a few verses down the line Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of Yet another call, this time it was the other way around. These people were bubbling in the hellfire. When I say bubbling, the bubbling is made mention of in various ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ. And the condition of the skin is made mention of in the Quran. That the people burning in hellfire, كُلَّمَا نَضِجَتْ جُلُودُهُمْ بَدَّلْنَاهُمْ جُلُودًا غَيْرَهَا لِيَذُوقُ الْعَذَابِ Every time their skins are burnt, they will be renewed in order that they may taste the punishment afresh. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. The hadith speaks about how they will be roasting in hellfire and the flesh will be burning, dripping pus and blood. And they will be so thirsty, they won't have anything to drink. There will be heat, there will be fire, there will be burning. And Allah says, وَنَادَى أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ أَصْحَابَ الْجَنَّةِ أَنْ أَفِيضُوا عَلَيْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ أَوْ مِمَّا رَزَقَكُمُ اللَّهِ The people of hellfire in that condition will scream out to the people of heaven and they will say, Please, can you pour on us a little bit of water or any liquid that you have just pour it on us and the people of heaven will respond Allah has prohibited anything of that nature for those who disbelieved for those who denied for those who turned away 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it's prohibited. You're not allowed to pour anything. So what will they be forced to drink? The same extract that was released when they were roasted. The pus and the blood and so on. The hadith uses the word tinatul khabal. What a filthy drink. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So one might ask immediately, how, what do we do to protect ourselves from this? Well, let's listen. Allah says in the Quran, immediately after that, those who did not take their religion seriously those who did not take their religion seriously meaning those who took it as an amusement and a pastime and they did whatever they desired allah says they forgot us allah says on this day we will forget them in the same way that when we sent them reminder after reminder they decided to ignore last month i was having a discussion with a person who claimed that there was no life after death so he tells me you prove to me or say something to me that will convince me that i need to believe that there's a life after death and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put something in my mind and I want to share it with you. I told him, okay, you don't believe in revelation, do you? He said, no. So we need to speak now with the brain, with common sense. We need to talk without revelation, put it on one side. I told him, brother, if you are going to Japan and you know what has happened in Japan and I were to give you a uniform, I were to give you a suit like a space suit, and I were to tell you, look, you're traveling to Japan. Take this because there is a nuclear leak there. Take it. There is a nuclear leak there. You might need it. In fact, if I were to tell you, you're definitely going to need it. What would you do? He said, I take it along. I said, but what if you went there and there was no nuclear leak? He says, well, then at least I didn't take it for nothing because I saved myself. I said, okay, remember what you said. There are people like you who are saying that you're going to die and all that's going to happen is you're going to rot and that's it, it's the end. He said, yes. And there are people like us who are telling you that there is something to come. So if we were good and we abstained from bad and we sought forgiveness and we did everything that we believe the creator has instructed us to do, one of two things is going to happen to us according to you. Either if what we've said is true, we will go to heaven. And if what you've said is true, we haven't lost anything. We just carried the suit with us. We haven't lost anything. But for you, you don't want to take the suit. So it's better for you to fulfill what we are saying so that when you get there, if you are going to rot, you haven't lost anything. But if you're not going to rot, oh, then this is the call. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and wallahi, this man told me, you the first person who's given me something to think. I said, no, you promised me moments ago, tell me something convincing. Don't you agree it's convincing? He said, yeah, it is, but I still believe that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. We are Muslimin, we have the kitab. We've come to the masjid in order to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have it with us. Still, sometimes we ignore it. So Allah says, you want to ignore it? Wait, we are, we are not, we are warning you that you might just be ignored on another day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. And this brings tears to the eyes. The other verses that also brought tears. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَفَأَمِنَ أَهْلُ الْقُرَىٰ أَنْ يَأْتِيَهُمْ بَأْسُنَا بَيَاتًا وَهُمْ نَائِمُونَ أَوَأَمِنَ أَهْلُ الْقُرَىٰ Dear 
Do the people of the towns feel secure against a punishment that might overtake them at night whilst they are sleeping? Do they feel secure? And the next question Allah says, Do the people of the towns feel secure against a punishment that might overtake them in the afternoon whilst they are playing? Allahu Akbar. And Allah says, Do they feel secure against the punishment of Allah? Nobody besides the losers can feel secure against the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, protect us. Ya Allah, do not punish us. When we hear the winds blowing, and when we hear the strong winds, and when we see the rains, and when we feel the strong rain, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection. It could be punishment. Let's move to the verses we were speaking about yesterday. We had ended where the Prophet Noah, may peace be upon him, Nuh alayhi salatu was salam, had made a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We said, for so long he was just praying for guidance. And after so many years, he one day decided, now it's time to raise my hands. After they threatened him, and after they wanted to stone him to death, now he raised his hands. And the dua he made, he says, before he made this dua, he is telling Allah, look, Ya Allah, you instructed me to do this. I want to tell you what I've done. Now Allah knows, but this is just so that he bears witness against his own people. All the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have asked a question to their people and they've received a response. Have I conveyed the message? And they were told, yes. Even Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the final hajj, he asked a question. All his companions, he says, have I conveyed the message? They said, Bala, naam, yes, you have. He looked up and he said, Allahumma fashhad. Oh Allah, bear witness. Look at what they've said. They've said that I've conveyed the message because they were messengers. Subhanallah. So, Nuh, the Prophet Noah, he says, Qala Rabbi inni da'awtu qawmi laylan wa nahara. Oh my Rabb, I have called my people by night and I called them at daytime. فَلَمْ يَزِدْهُمْ دُعَائِي إِلَّا فِرَارًا As I called them, it increased them in running away from the message. They ran further away. Every time I called them, they went further away. Every time I called them, they went further away. May we not be from amongst those whom the more we are reminded, the further away we go from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember the lessons we are drawing. We need to currentize these verses and apply them to our lives. Current. So what does this have for me in it? If Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam is complaining that the more I read for them the verses and the more I called them, the further they went away, we should not be from amongst those. Then Allah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He continued. O Allah, every time I called them so that you could forgive them, I called them towards seeking forgiveness so that you could forgive them. They put their fingers into their ears. Imagine adults when you're talking to them and they put their fingers into their ears. How foolish would that be looking? And this was a message of Allah, a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They, Allah says that Nuh alayhi salam complained saying, Oh Allah, whenever I gave them the message, they put their fingers into their ears. Whenever the message comes to us, let's never ever put our fingers into our ears. Let's never turn away. This is why tonight we read a verse at the end of Surah Al-A'raf. Allah says, وَإِذَا قُرِئَ الْقُرْآنُ فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ وَأَنصِتُوا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ When the Qur'an is being recited, be silent, listen to it carefully, so that you may be overtaken by mercy, or Allah may have mercy on you. So if we'd like mercy, when the Qur'an is being recited, listen, try to understand the message, and you will achieve the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Nuh alayhi salam says, whenever I called them and in order that you may forgive them, they put their fingers into their ears and over and above that, they covered themselves with their clothes. Imagine if we try to picture it, you're talking to someone and he's put his fingers in his ears. And when you're talking to them a little bit more, he tries and cover himself with his clothes. How foolish does it look? Allah says, look, 
Nuh alayhi salam says, look at what they were doing. And they continued. They remained on that mischief that they were engaged in. It did not help them at all. And they were arrogant, a great haughtiness. Arrogance meaning they rejected the truth and they were despising the people. They were despising Nuh himself. He says, the verse just before this one I read now, he says, Oh Allah, then I called them openly, directly. I called them in the masses and I called them in private and I called them openly and I called them in secret. I went to them one by one and I also spoke to them publicly, but it didn't help them. What did I tell them? Let me tell you, Ya Allah. Nuh alayhi salam is saying, Ya Allah, this is what I said to them. فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا I said, seek forgiveness of your maker. Whoever made you, your Rabb. And I told you the meaning of Rabb is the one who created. Creator, nourisher, cherisher, sustainer, provider, protector, curer, the one in absolute control of every aspect of existence is known as Rabbun. So he says, seek the forgiveness of your Rabb. For indeed, he is most forgiving. He is most forgiving. That's the lesson for all of us. Every time we are told, seek the forgiveness of Allah, Allah is most forgiving. This is the month of Ramadan, month of forgiveness, seek the forgiveness of Allah. This is a blessed day, a blessed moment, seek the forgiveness of Allah. Leave your bad ways, leave your bad habits, seek the forgiveness of Allah. He is most forgiving, most merciful. We hear it in Salah, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim. Most beneficent, most merciful. We hear it every day. We read it every day. Subhanallah. But the rejected one is the one who doesn't turn. Allah says he is merciful. Yes. But if you defy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beyond a certain point, then his punishment overtakes that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. So he says, oh Allah, I told them that seek forgiveness. Allah is most forgiving. And I even made it clear what you revealed to me, I told them clearly that when you seek forgiveness, these are the benefits. Do you want to hear the benefits of seeking forgiveness? Do you want to hear the benefits of istighfar? Nuh alayhi salam told his people, Yursil is sama alaykum midarara. Firstly, when you seek forgiveness, Allah will forgive you and he will send rain that is beneficial for you which means your crop. The economy of any country today is based mainly on rainfall. If there, if there is drought, there is a problem. When the rain falls and there is no drought and the, the crop has grown, mashallah, the economy flourishes. But when there is a shortage of water, when there is rain, no rain, there is a punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first thing that will happen when any one of us engages in seeking the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is that he will forgive us and one of the signs is the rainfall will come correct rainfall because too much of it is punishment or a test and too little of it is also either a test or punishment but when it is just right it shows that allah is forgiving us and he has forgiven us and he will grant you sustenance that you are content with he will increase your wealth. So those who want increase in wealth, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. There is no point in going and seeking wealth by haram means and trying to go and gamble and think that, you know what? I won. I tried with 10 rands and I got 60 rands. Now let me put 10 million so I can get 60 million. When you put in the 10 million, you come back with the same six that you started with. Then what happened? You lose your house, you lose your car, you lose your business, you lose your family. But moments ago you were a loaded person it's greed allah says seek forgiveness we will grant you contentment with the six rands you had you will spend it through the day and you'll still have two rands change Allahu Akbar. so this is what istighfar will do for you Nuh alayhi salam told his people it will grant you wealth it will open your doors of sustenance so if you want sustenance Ask the owner of sustenance. Don't go to anyone else. Ajibtu liman talabat dunya min ghayri malikiha. I'm amazed and surprised at the one who seeks 
Sustenance from those who don't own it. Who is the owner of sustenance? Allah. You want sustenance, it's Allah who will provide, not anybody else. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. And that wealth that has come to us via clandestine and prohibited means, it will be used in a destructive manner. It will result in our children being so disobedient because they are eating that which is prohibited. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. It will bring with it lots of harm and curse and turbulence rather than goodness, prosperity and contentment. So it's better for us to ask Allah and to try our best and be happy with what we have. And then he says, if you seek forgiveness, Allah will purify your offspring for you. Firstly, he will grant you the offspring. And secondly, he will make them also from amongst the good by your istighfar, by your repentance. When you repent, then there is a greater likelihood that your children will also inshallah follow suit. You might have one, you might have someone after you have fulfilled all your duties and they have now arrived at adulthood. They might renege here and there that is between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For as long as you have fulfilled your duty and for as long as you have been exemplary and for as long as you were their role model inshallah, then by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no blame upon us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So he says, over and above that he will grant you gardens and he will grant you rivers that flow this is also speaking about the life after death when you increase your repentance allah will open your doors in this life as well as in the life after death and this is why the hadith says Give good news of paradise to the one in whose books or in on whose papers, on whose records, there is a lot of istighfar. That's a clean cut hadith. It makes so much sense. If in my book or in your book, there is a lot of repentance on the day of Qiyamah, it's going to come up and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to see and everybody is going to see that there is so much repentance here. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, give good news to that person. May Allah make us from those who can engage in repentance on a daily basis, constantly, because that will help us. Then Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam continued. He asks them, he says, مَا لَكُمْ لَا تَرْجُونَ لِلَّهِ وَقَارًا What is wrong with you people? How can you not have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy? How come you are not hopeful of anything good coming from Allah? I am telling you, if you do this, the goodness will come to you. You are still not doing it. Look at that. So on one hand, he warned them of a punishment and told them when you do evil, this is the bad that will come in your direction. And on the other hand, he told them, if you seek forgiveness, this is the good that will come in your direction. So he's saying, you're neither taking the warning, nor do you want to have hope in the goodness. So what is it that's going to move you people? Now Nuh alayhi salam is telling Allah, Ya Allah, I have depleted absolutely everything. I've told them everything. I gave them this example and I gave them that example. They still don't want to turn. And then he says, there was one more thing that I told them about. What was it? Don't you see how Allah has created the skies above you, the seven heavens? Don't you see how He has created the moon that shines and the sun that gives off light? It is Allah that created you from the soil and He will return you to the same soil. Don't you see you burying your dead, returning to the soil and Allah says we will resurrect you from that soil. وَاللَّهُ جَعَلَ لَكُمُ الْأَرْضَ بِسَاطًا لِتَسْنُكُوا مِنْهَا سُبُنًا فِجَاجًا Don't you see that Allah has created gravity? Allah has laid the earth in such a way that you can walk on it. Imagine if there was no gravity on earth. 
<laughs> what would happen to us? We would have to be tied to something and we would have to be floating around. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala laid it down. He laid it for us. Bisatan. He actually laid it. And he says, you can walk on that. And you can make roads. But no, they didn't want to listen. They were interested in their own thing. As we said yesterday, very few people accepted the message. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those who can see his signs and turn to him. In this masjid prior to Ramadan, I spoke about the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with an example of the stars and that star subhanallah the closest star is four and a half light years away from us which means when we look outside we are only seeing a star that was there four and a half years ago and we still think it's there subhanallah there are other stars that are 15 light years 20 light years away which means we're looking at it and if there is a shooting star we're reading the dua for it but we don't realize this happened before i was born i'm only seeing it now because light travels at so many light years the distance between me and that star is so much this is the greatness of allah we are so insignificant oh man you are small insignificant in comparison to the rest of the creatures of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creation of the skies and the earth is far greater than the creation of man but man many men do not know so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says then nuh alayhi salatu was salam after that he says after I told them everything, they still went against what I said and they followed the paths that resulted in destruction against their wealth and their own children. Those are the paths that they chose to follow. And they were plotting huge plots not only against me and against the believers but even against one another and each time they had children they continued telling their children don't leave your gods these stones and statues that you have here these statues that we have they warned their children don't leave these statues so their children were even more venomous than them their children became more dangerous than them imagine how bad they must be the prophet is there they are related to him because they're not very far off from adam alayhi salatu wasalam and he is warning them and as he is warning them even their children are becoming worse than them may allah protect us may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us if a person is evil you find his children will overtake him in evil unless with the miracle of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are guided and when a person is on the right path and has sacrificed and dedicated for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the will of Allah from his offspring will be those who have also come out on a similar path. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So this is why Nuh alayhi salatu was salam is now complaining about even the children. So he says, وَقَدْ أَضَلُّوا كَثِيرًا وَلَا تَزِدِ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا ضَلَالًا They have led so many astray, so many astray. He now raised his hands and he says, وَقَالَ نُوحُ الرَّبِّ لَا تَذَرْ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ دَيَّارًا What a powerful dua. Imagine for a messenger to make such a solid dua of destruction against his own people. What must have happened? He says, Oh Allah, now that I've told you everything and I've explained it one after the other, do not leave a single one of them on this earth. And do you know what Allah says? We read the verse, the last verse yesterday. And there is another verse I'd like to read. Allah says, 
قَبْلُ فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ In Surah Al-Anbiya, Allah says, And Nuh alayhi salam called out to us a long time ago. We answered him immediately. We answered him immediately because it took him so long to make this dua. The point we raised yesterday is, remember, those who are friends of Allah, those who are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Muslimin, those who are trying to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, never harm them. If they raise their hands, they won't do so immediately. They will make dua, Ya Allah, guide this person. Ya Allah, have mercy on this person. Ya Allah, bless this person. But when we engage in their lives negatively, there may come a point in their lives when they will say, Ya Allah, destroy this person. That's the end. Then we are wondering, why is my life a mess? I usually like to tell people, if your life is in total chaos, is there anyone who is serving the cause of Allah? Any scholar of Islam that you've ever harmed? That's the first question you should ask yourself. If you have, whether you have spread rumor about him or harmed him or attacked him or blocked him or did whatever, your life is doomed. Doomed. Why? Because he works for Allah. His boss will sort you out. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. It's a powerful statement. Think about it. Sometimes our lives are in a mess. We don't know what we've done against one of the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we're trying to find the button that went wrong. And we're trying to press the right button. And we don't know. Our lives are upside down. Remember, if you cannot benefit someone, minimum, don't harm them. Allahu Akbar. If you cannot benefit someone, minimum, don't harm them. And those who are friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if negative thought goes through your mind, remember something. You better block it very quickly. And don't allow it to continue. Who knows? They might be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than anyone else. And the day they say, Ya Allah, this person is now troubling me. Destroy them. Believe me, if not today, in a few years time, it's coming. Before you die, you taste it. Not after death. Before you die, you taste it. And then after the death, it will continue. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. Unlock spiritual enrichment with One Islam TV app. Immerse yourself in a unique experience that is music-free, fully halal, and continuously updated with fresh content daily. Enjoy a user-friendly experience with features that allow you to save your favorite videos, create personalized playlists, and download and watch your content offline. Download the One Islam TV app now and embark on a transformative journey where faith and entertainment unite. Mm -hmm.